Hey everyone, welcome to episode 12. So today we're hopefully going to be wrapping up our work on the map generator script. Uh, I'd like to start off by creating a map class, uh, which will essentially just store all of the sort of defining characteristics of a map, such as its size, obstacle percent, seed, and whatnot. Um, and that will allow us to store an array of maps. And uh, in that way we can sort of save the maps that we create here in the editor. Uh, so let's, let's go into the map generator script. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and create a public class uh, just called map. All right, and I want that to show up in the inspector. So I'm going to add system.serializable. I'm also going to add that system.serializable to the coord so we can have that show up in the inspector as well if we want, uh, which, which we do because in the map, uh, I've been previously defining the size of the map as a vector two but it makes more sense for those to be integers, so I'm going to use the coord struct we created, public coord, uh, we can use that for map size, and then what else do we want? We want a public float for the obstacle percent, all right, and we want a public int for the seed, and then just some other stuff that we're going to be implementing today, let's create a public float for the minimum obstacle height and a public float for the max obstacle height. So we're going to be randomizing uh, the height of each obstacle. And then also let's create a public color for the foreground and, uh, oops, the foreground and background colors. Just create that quickly, background color. Okay, and like we have at the top of this script uh, for the obstacle percent, I'm just going to clamp that in a range of uh, of zero to one. Okay, so now that we've got this all stored in our map class, uh, we can delete these uh, these old variables. Delete obstacle percent and the seed and the map center as well, since that will now uh, be defined in the map class. I should create that. Um, let's maybe just create a little uh, public accessor here. We can say public uh, coord, and we can call that the map center. We can just say get, and this will just return a new coordinate, and it can just divide map size dot x by two and map size dot y by two. Okay, so that returns the map center. Um, now we're probably getting a whole lot of red because all of these variables have been deleted. So what we want to do is uh, create a map variable for the current map that we're working with. And uh, we'll define the current map as being the map in the array we're about to create, so public map array maps, and we'll also have a public int, uh, we can call this our map index, so that's the map that we're currently looking at. So when we start generating a map, we'll first set our current map equal to maps, and we'll get the map index of that array. Okay, so now for all of these variables that have turned red, we uh, just want to add current map dot before them. So I'm maybe just going to select all of this up to the map class and just quickly do a find and replace. So everywhere that it finds map size, I'm going to replace that with current map dot map size. All right, and the rest I'll maybe just do by hand. I'll just copy current map dot and uh, add here, current map dot seed. This line over here where we actually set the map center is no longer necessary since that's being uh, calculated inside of the map class itself. All right, but just paste it there and there. And we've probably got a couple more down here. All right, that should be all of them. Great, so I'm gonna, gonna save that, go into Unity, see if this is working. So uh, in a moment we should get errors because we don't have any maps. So let's set the size of that to one. And uh, let's create our first map here. Make it 10 by 10, give it some obstacles. The rest of these variables obviously we haven't actually implemented yet. And uh, let's test this out by creating a second map. Um, so I'll set my map index to one for this. 
and we could change this to maybe be 15 by 5. All right, so we can now switch between the two maps that we've created, map 0 and map 1. Cool. So I'm just going to clear all of these errors here, and uh, let's go on to implementing some of these things. So maybe we'll start with uh, randomizing the min and the max obstacle height. So uh, to do this, we're going to want to get some random numbers based on our current map seed. So let's create a system.random object, which we can just call our pseudo random number generator, PRNG for short. It's equal to a new system.random object, and we can pass in our current map seed variable. All right. Um, I think I'd like to just very quickly add some comments just so it's easier to find uh, uh, sort of the section of our generate map method that we want. So over here, I'll just say, uh, here we're generating cohorts. Um, here, create map holder object. Mm, over here, we are spawning tiles. Here, we're spawning obstacles. And here, we are uh, creating the nav mesh mask. Okay, so now it's just easier to find our place. So I want to go down to where we're spawning the obstacles. And over here, if we create a new obstacle in this block uh, right here, um, we want to do this where we're setting the local scale. Uh, let's, let's at the top, let's say, um, say float, whoops, float, uh, we can call this our obstacle height is equal to, and we're going to want to do a lerp between the current map's uh, min obstacle height and the current map's max obst obstacle height, and we want to give it a random percent value, so we'll get prng dot, uh, what's it, next, uh, next double, Okay, um, since Unity works pretty much exclusively with floats and never with doubles, we're going to have to convert this to a float, just like so. Okay, and uh, we'll obviously want to adjust the obstacle's position to account for its new scale. Uh, so we can just say, instead of vector3.up multiplied by a half, we can multiply it by the obstacle height over 2. Okay, and for the local scale, um, maybe the easiest way to do this will just be to say new vector 3 and uh, pass in this for the x, pass in the obstacle height for the y, and pass in that same thing again for the z value. Okay, um, that could be working. Let's try it out. Nope, error. Where's this error coming in? Um, something dodgy about all my brackets, it would seem. Yeah, so there shouldn't be one there, and there shouldn't be one there either. Okay. So, I'm gonna go down here. Um, it seems like all of them have been set to scale zero, which is good. Okay, so that that's nice. We can get a sort of staggered height effect. You can even get them going below the map if for whatever reason that was a thing you wanted. Okay, cool. So the next thing to do is to uh, get our foreground and background colors working. Um, so the way that uh, materials work in Unity with sort of instances of the material only being created at runtime, uh, that means that when we're in the editor, we can only access the shared material of a particular renderer, uh, meaning that all our obstacles have to have the same color, which is not ideal since we want to have this sort of interpolation between them, which we can preview in the editor. So we're going to have to use a slightly hacky approach, uh, and the result of that is just that in the editor we might sometimes get some material leaks, and uh, Unity will probably give us a friendly warning message about it from time to time, but it's it's really nothing to be too concerned about. It will. Uh, it will manage all of that for us, clean it up. Um, I've just realized this this random object should really be created after we've set our current map, uh, since it references the current map. 
I'm actually surprised that wasn't giving me a uh, an error. Um, okay, so down here, let's get a reference to our obstacles renderer. We can call this obstacle renderer. That's equal to new obstacle dot get component renderer. All right, and we can also create a new material called the obstacle material, I guess. This is equal to new material, and we want that material to be based on the uh, the shared material of the obstacle renderer. So you can see when we create a new material, we can give it a source. Um, so we can say obstacle renderer dot shared material. All right, then over here we will set the obstacle material, and once we've done that, we can then say that obstacle renderer dot shared material is equal to this new temporary obstacle material that we've created. Okay, so we want to interpolate between the uh, background and foreground color. So let's create a float. Uh, we can call this our color percent. And to get our color percent, we really just want to see uh, how far forward this random code is on our map. So we can just divide random code dot y by the current map the current maps uh, map size on the y axis. Uh, these are both both integers, so that's uh, just going to round down and probably give us zero. So we need to cast at least one of them to a float so we get the correct floating point value, and then we can say um, we can say obstacle material dot color is equal to and we'll use the colors interpolate method to go from uh, current map dot foreground to current map dot background. And for the percent, color percent. And that should be working, I guess. Let's try it out. Um, can just set my foreground color here. Seems to be working nicely. Um, maybe make this an orangey thing or a blue. Yeah, you can experiment with that, get some nice combinations. Um, okay, so one thing that one thing that we've caused to happen by uh, using integers as our x and y values is that if if I make this an uneven number, say fifteen, um, you can see that our map is no longer centered. And more importantly than that, even our navigation is slightly screwed up since, uh, well, once again, we're, we're dividing an integer by an integer, so we're not getting the exact correct uh, floating point value, which we want. So we can, we can easily fix this. Um, mostly it's this nav mesh mask bit and uh, also the code to position method that we need to fix. And uh, we, can, we can fix it very simply by whenever we divide by something, we just want to add an F on there to say that it's a floating point number, which will uh, make the division correct. So we want to do that here as well for, for all of these twos and fours that we divide by. I'll just do a little find, I guess. Um, I'll replace two by two F, replace all of those, and I'll replace four by four F, replace all of those. Okay, so if I save now, uh, that should hopefully be fixed. Let's just go into the inspector here so it updates. And yeah, that's correct again. So that's that's good. Um, there's really only one thing left to do, I guess, before we import this into our game, which is uh, to make a sort of ground collider so that the player can walk on it. So let's, uh, let's give the map a box collider component just over here. And if we go into the map generator script, right at the top of the generate map method, we can just say get component box collider. And we just want to set the size of that. So box collider.size is equal to a new vector three. For the x-axis, we can give it current map dot map size dot x multiplied by tile size. For the y, we can just maybe give it something small like uh, 0.05. And for z, uh, current map dot map size dot y multiplied by tile size. Okay, uh, there should be a set of parentheses there. 
Whoops, I didn't mean to open Blender. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got a little ground collider around it that we can walk on. So I guess one last tiny thing that I'd like to do just before we go ahead and import this all into our game scene is uh, just make a small modification to the map editor script. Uh, at the moment, it's regenerating the map uh, sort of every moment that we're that we have the map generator script open in the inspector, which means this is getting deleted and reinstantiated a lot. Uh, and if we've got larger maps, then that's uh, going to be a bit of a bog on performance. So instead of using this base.on inspector GUI call, we can instead use the draw default inspector method. And the advantage of this is that this method actually returns a bool, which is only true if a value has been updated in the inspector. So we can put this in an if statement, like so. Uh, let me just move this to the top up here. So only if a value changes do we actually regenerate the map. Um, of course, if we change something in the script, uh, we might want to sort of uh, have the map regenerate then as well. So let's give an option to do it manually by creating a little button. So we can say uh, GUI layout dot button. So if the button's pressed, then we can call this button generate map. If it's pressed, then we want to generate the map as well. Okay, so I'm going to save. And basically, to get this into our game scene, we go copy, we go to our game scene, we delete this stuff that we have there, and we press paste. And now, not sure why everything's pink. If I hit generate map, okay, that's fixed it. Already a use for that button, amazing. Um, let's get our player outside of all these obstacles. I'll just position him on the center tile, somewhere around there. And we're going to navigation, and we'll just have to hit bake. So that should all be sorted. Um, okay, there are some little cuts there. I think I'm just going to change the agent radius down to, say, 0.4. Okay, that should fix those up. And let's try playing. Okay, so things are super cramped in here. Um, I died very quickly. Let me just move my, my map camera out a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll split up my game window over here so I can see what that looks like. Um, all right. Can maybe make the outline percent a little bit less and maybe make these obstacles a little bit lower and a little bit more sparse. Okay. That should give a slightly better gameplay experience. All right, so that's that's looking quite nice. Um, I shouldn't be able to walk over those. We'll have to, I guess, if they're if they're so small, then the rigid body doesn't really mind. Um, we might have to fix that at some point. But otherwise, looking good. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.